over the next few decades, the metaverse will become immensely more advanced and integrated in our daily lives. Some people think the metaverse is just a hype. Others believe it to be the greatest evolution of the internet. Together with these sharpest minds in this space, we are going to explore the future of the metaverse. We want to understand the impacts of this new world. And in this show, we will find the answers. Welcome to Metaverse Mentors. So today I'm joined with a guest who is very, very experienced in AR and I think he really has an interesting story to tell us about uh, AR and especially how it also plugs into the metaverse. Today I'm joined by Louis Martins. He has, he has almost uh, more than a decade uh, experience in uh, AR but also uh, some knowledge about the metaverse. He's an international speaker when it comes to AR, but also XR and the metaverse. And he's also been an author of Reality is Death, Long Life, Augmented Reality. I'm very glad uh, for Louis to join uh, me today. So yeah, thank you for joining me, uh, Louis. Thank you for having me. Uh, and uh, it's really exciting to, to have this opportunity to discuss, um, well, the metaverse and uh, what's just around the corner for all of us. Yes, I'm very curious in exploring uh, what AR explicitly is and also how it plugs into the metaverse. But before we really dive into the deep waters, I'm also interested in uh, your background, your relationship, what your emotional connection has been with uh, AR and how you arrived at where you are uh, today. Can you give us a quick rundown uh, on your background, uh, Luis? Sure. So um, to start off, uh, I uh, am one of those professionals that actually comes from the, the past century. So <laughs> I started working in 1998. And uh, so this means that I actually witnessed the, the, the full growth uh, uh, and inflating of the dot-com bubble. So I, I come from those times where people said that Amazon was never going to make it. <laughs> Uh, where <laughs> Facebook didn't exist. Um, that, that's pretty much when uh, the, the time when I started working. Um, started working in uh, uh, a training company, uh, actually uh, doing some uh, um, training courses on these new, um, uh, new jobs that uh, were coming up, like uh, e-commerce store managers and, uh, and the like. Um, and it was really, really interesting uh, because uh, uh, it was, I think, um, the, the most or, or the very first time that we had a technological hype driving uh, economy. So it was uh, very, very impactful. Uh, so between 1998 uh, and 2002, I worked uh, again in those training and consultancy um, companies and also on uh, um, an e-commerce uh, provider. Well, actually, it was a, a bubble <laughs> startup that, of course, in 2002, uh, actually in 2001, uh, after the bubble bursted, well, uh, it went well belly up. Then I created my own company, um, always in the intersection of marketing and technology, because that's pretty much what I do. And um, uh, yeah, so between 2002 and 2007, I ran this uh, marketplace much similar to freelancer.com or Elance, and uh, I got an exit. <laughs> so I Congratulations, went, uh, that's uh, not a bad yes. thing, uh, I suppose, right? <laughs> no, it was, it was really not. At that time, we, we, wouldn't, we didn't call it an exit, <laughs> uh, and there were no startups, but still, it was uh, really, really nice. And, uh, um, and of course, afterwards, I thought that I was a genius, so I, I started a new one crashed and burned and uh, then afterwards uh, created a third one and that third one I, I, I had to close because I, I got in 2014 so we're talking like a, a big uh, we're talking about like a, a life 12 years of uh, entrepreneurship uh, but um, 2014 I got this um, invitation to join a corporate group here in Portugal 
uh, that had a company dealing specifically on augmented reality solutions called Next Reality. And so this was your uh, first they... introduction with AR uh, at that time, or? Yeah, previously, so um, in the, uh, the company I closed, um, we're talking uh, about, uh, it provided several services to agencies. So I already had like some contact with augmented reality solutions that at that time were more like um, bling effects. So we're talking about uh, projection effects where you point your uh, mobile phone screen to a uh, marker and out came like uh, an animation. Okay, so it wasn't it, like, yeah. yeah. So it, it was, uh, and mind you, we're talking about times uh, where we had like iPhone 3. Yeah. So it's not like the, the processing capability was not there yet. So, um, but yeah, but, but the, the promise uh, and, and the, uh, the potential was, and at that time, um, I, I was fortunate enough to, to get in touch with the technology uh, when it was, um, when the changes started to accelerate, let's say like that. So, for instance, I was in this company, so in 2015, uh, when, for instance, um, Apple went in, uh, started to get into the augmented reality game and bought Matayo, that was at that time the, the biggest, um, well, one of the biggest developers of, uh, or engines for augmented reality experiences. And, um, and, and the, the issue is that uh, I, I kept on working in that company and um, um, I, I started to realize that um, the impact that augmented reality as a whole brought to our lives was so immense. It was so, so great that uh, all the people that were surrounding me and around me in the company that were mainly engineers and technologists, they w wouldn't be able to, to, to solve all the challenges that, that those solutions brought to our lives. So we're talking about um, solution, we're talking about challenges uh, regarding ethics, regarding um, uh, privacy, uh, they, they, they wouldn't worry uh, mainly about privacy. Of course, I would try and help because that's inside my, my, my scope. But for instance, um, topics regarding uh, our families, regarding our own safety, regarding as users. Because uh, the issue is that more and more, I started seeing, well, and we see a lot of great technological platforms rolling out, um, but more and more of these technologies and technological platforms are being rolled out and we onboard ourselves. So there are, there are no other people educating us in how to responsibly or how to use these platforms the best way possible. Moreover, no one's actually um, uh, trying to help like governments, or maybe they are, but uh, not as effectively as, uh, well, as, uh, um, uh, as they could because judging for the, the full effect or for what's happening, but uh, governments right now also needs to uh, get um, and to start using and, and to connect with platforms. But most of the times they are, uh, they also need to onboard themselves. And, and uh, while only when we start using these platforms, uh, are we able to identify the dangers and the challenges in using them for us socially, for governments politically, for um, our families. So again, uh, all of these issues kind of drove me into, um, well, thinking that it would be interesting to, to start working and to start uh, thinking about ways to uh, supplement, let's say like that, these technological platforms and, and to think about how, um, again, uh, these platforms and mainly augmented reality because we're talking about technology that can change the meaning of spaces, how we perceive uh, an object, how we perceive an event. So it changes our memories, right? And um, I, I thought that I started thinking that it would be really, really important for us to, and for me, 
to start working with others in order to try and supplement and trying to create models or frameworks to uh, better onboard and, and to create uh, more uh, responsible practices on um, well on on using these platforms and uh, that's really much what drove me to speaking uh, what drove me to um, uh, to uh, writing <laughs> also the book and um, well pretty much also to connect with uh, several communities like the VRARA Association the VRAR Association of which I was uh, chapter co-president uh, since uh, last month or until last month um, and uh, what more uh, also I connect with uh, uh, and try to keep in touch with several other communities uh, that uh, try and promote like for instance the XR uh, safety initiative try and promote safety privacy ethics well in a more let's say human centered um, approach to technology say like that actually right now I'm working at KPR so I'm I, I changed jobs last year and uh, that's our main focus so we we develop um, we develop uh, uh, augmented reality solutions uh, to enable uh, workers on the manufacturing shop floor to become augmented so uh, we we enable these uh, workers with tools that drive more and better results for them and we uh, by doing such we are uh, allowing them to grow not just in their results and not just again on, on what they're giving to the company but also on uh, allowing them to uh, grow in their own knowledge and, and to keep on growing while, while working. So, uh, and, and this aspect of thinking about ways to center technology around humans is um, an exercise that, uh, again, is most of the times not done uh, inside technological companies or technological development companies. And that's why it's so important to involve other people from other areas to try and supplement that. And yeah, I, I think that in a very, very broad <laughs> nutshell, this was my, my profession. Yes, thank, thank you for, by, for thank providing you. that uh, picture with your background uh, and f variety of uh, disciplines that you have uh, experienced. One of the things that really interested me is that you have some context, which I don't, because you have experienced the dot-com bubble and I'm curious I see all these metaverses emerge now a virtual world from any corner that I almost can imagine do you see any resemblances with the dot-com bubble and what you're seeing now with organizations and objectives and initiatives uh, towards the metaverse yes <laughs> the short answer is yes uh, I do um, I actually shared, I don't know, maybe even some days ago, something on social media regarding that. Um, um, it, it's, uh, let's say this, simplifying it a bit, what we're talking about is that we, we are really uh, in the early days of uh, what the metaverse will or can be. How early be. are we before you elaborate more? How early do you think we are? I would say, I, I would say that right now we are still defining uh, the rules of engagement. So let, let's say like that. We, we started um, having a, a World Wide Web and the World Wide Web brought this fantastic cool tool uh, called uh, the link, right? So HTTP. And um, that was brought, sorry, and this was brought to us like um, already as a platform on top of which we started doing content, creating our content, and of course also facing several challenges by publishing content and enabling the users to actually, um, with tools for them to interact with that content. And then we started having like uh, the, the first wave with the uh, web 1.0 uh, 
uh, where users would just read and maybe they could register, but it was very, um, the interaction was not there. Users could not generate their own content. And then Web 2.0, okay, users could generate content. There was monetization around that. And suddenly uh, things actually uh, started to happen. Now, uh, what I just told you went throughout like 20 years, maybe more. I do not think that we are going to uh, wait like 20 years to get in, to, to, to reach a metaverse. But right now we are still defining what the metaverse uh, is going to be. Um, and, and if you look around and if you ask like several people about what their take or what their definition of the metaverse is, you will hear a lot of this of things. Absolutely. So you I will have hear. Heard that yeah. That already. yeah. You have like one saying, oh, it's in the internet and the new internet, uh, it's web 3.0 or it's the new version of the internet. Great. You have also several other ones that say, no, this is web 3 meets the spatial web. It's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, another one says, no, this is. Uh, virtual reality. <laughs> Some of them just say it's virtual reality. So you know, we just jack in and then we're there and uh, we live in a virtual reality mm -hmm. world. Again, it's uh, their take on it. Um, as I see it, um, it, it it's, it's a, a bit more than that. But the issue is that right now we are still defining it. So we are uh, if we do a comparison, we are prior to the launch of the World Wide Web uh, as a whole, as a platform. So we are discussing, but the issue that we are starting to discuss what it's, uh, it, it is going to be, what it shouldn't be and what it shouldn't be is really interesting. Mm -hmm because we didn't have that opportunity the first time around. What has made that we are suddenly, personally for me, it feels like we have, this, we have been discussing this more intensively since last year, and especially with uh, the rise of NFTs and uh, blockchain and DeFi and all the, that stuff. But what do you think has made that it has become a more relevant and actual dialogue nowadays? I think several things. Um... You know, uh, you're, you're right, um, Web3, uh, DeFi, cryptos, uh, pff, NFTs and the NFT economy suddenly uh, brought a boost to this. But uh, alongside with it, uh, we also had like uh, uh, Facebook's renaming or rebranding to Meta and uh, that, um, let's, uh, let's call it impactful uh, presentation that they had regarding their vision of the metaverse. Now, if you pick those, uh, those were, let's say, um, events or, or sequences of events that f for sure um, influenced uh, our uh, vision and, and also the, the appearance of so many different augmented reality and virtual reality glasses started to also to um, make um, uh, or, or allow for a bigger availability of those devices uh, in uh, well, in our lives. So right now, for instance, uh, Oculus, uh, I, I saw this statistic that said that Oculus in 2021 sold um, around 10 million devices. So that's, that's, that's quite huge. significant. Yeah. It is, it is. So uh, I think that, again, those events for sure helped us like um, at least acknowledge the importance of uh, what the metaverse is. But I'd also say that um, we are right now uh, witnessing a convergence of so many different technologies that uh, are enabling, let's say like that, uh, a huge uh, transformation uh, in our lives. Um, so uh, right now you have like, for instance, 5G. Let's say like, uh, for instance, fi 5G, uh, as uh, a platform is very enabling. Of course, uh, it allows for uh, things, for instance, for downloads to uh, cease to exist. So right now we can stream everything, right? It's really great. 
um, the, the ability also for us to reduce uh, latency allows us also to um, interact in a way uh, with uh, uh, web apps and uh, with uh, uh, features and applications that we were unable to before. So that's also really interesting. Um, but more than that, that another and maybe bigger impact that 5G brought was that suddenly telcos are really interested <laughs> in like pushing forward the case studies and the sorry the use cases that um, a virtual reality and augmented reality bring because suddenly they are possible with 5G. So they have uh, the, and so that they have, uh, or not they 5G has unlocked that capability before it wasn't possible before. Exactly because uh, with 5G we can have AR clouds we can have persistent multiplayer a fully continuously available augmented reality experiences in the middle of that street yeah. that all of us can see. Great, let's do that. Uh, the ability also for uh, that augmented reality experience to be connected with IoT. And so all of this transference and, and, and all of these data transactions and all of this huge data uh, package is only uh, manageable inside 5G when we're talking about mobile. And when network, I hear you speaking about so, it, I feel some things in that there is such a vast multiplicity of terminology uh, involved there. We, we have no problem, but I think it would be helpful for the listeners uh, with regards explicitly to VR, AR. I've also heard about MR and XR. Could you maybe help us understand what uh, the differences are between those four? Absolutely. Uh, so, um, starting with virtual reality. So, um, virtual reality um, is uh, focused on replacing our physical world with a digital one. So, uh, pretty much you put in uh, those um, uh, glasses, so VR glasses, we're talk talking about those opaque glasses, uh, where you are suddenly thrown into uh, or immersed into um, a digital experience. So this is the first characteristic of virtual reality. You are immersed. This means that, for instance, if uh, let's say your mobile phone um, rings, probably you'll take your, off your glasses and uh, you'll pick it up. But uh, if your Outlook receives an email, if you're notified by WhatsApp, all of those things that sometimes like drive you away from what you're doing here on the screen, that is not going to happen, at least not, not uh, to yeah. begin with, from the VR. So it's a much more dedicated experience because it's so. Just immersed. to reiterate that so, VR will be anything in which I am in a fake world. The, then I'm not involved in my own uh, podcast studio now, but I have my Oculus Quest and I will be in a fake world and I will not be able to pick up the phone or read my email. Is that correct? A digital world. Again, uh, I, I, I prefer this uh, terminology because uh, sometimes, uh, yeah, what, what's true uh, is something that we should, uh, that, that we will talk uh, right after. <laughs> Because uh, and what's real? Uh, because that's we're talking about um, virtual reality and augmented reality. So it's not about virtual experiences or augmented okay, experiences. And 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 the, this this is an actual issue because uh, um, another another for instance, virtual reality. We're talking about. Uh, you just said it. You can fake uh, your presence uh, not on the studio but on the moon, mm -hmm. right? And um, then suddenly you can like press uh, a button that doesn't exist uh, physically. And then suddenly you are on the bottom of the sea, talking to fishes. Okay, so, um, and this is just not possible <laughs> in our physical world, right? So um, the fact that uh, you are immersed and you have a dedicated experience, and then the fact that you have these um, very um, these impossible and, and uh, very memorable experiences again create memories that are very unique. So, what does this mean? This means that while you were 
in, in virtual reality, you put in your glasses, you put in your um, headset, you have your speaker, you interact with several other people, uh, you uh, have all of these experiences, your life wasn't spent here on the physical world because you don't have any memory or recollection of what happened around you because world. you were with the glasses. It was on the digital world. So the issue is that throughout that experience that lasted, let's say, 20 minutes, you were living in a digital world. Mm -hmm. So because your memories were from that digital world and you remember talking to someone on that digital world yeah. and you can tell other people and you can actually uh, bring that experience and that memory into a um, well, conversation with that person on the physical world. But again, it's a it different thing. It sounds like a dream almost. It's, uh, well, you have several uh, uh, names that then afterwards uh, were uh, brought in regarding virtual reality. Um, we are, uh, the issue is that we are very much awake and we are starting to operating, uh, to operational, uh, I'm trying to choose the best word, but I think that the best, the, the best thought is that we right now are starting to work with these platforms in a way that they connect also with our physical life. Um, moreover, the issue is that uh, it's, uh, not just a place where we go to like wander. Right now, for instance, if you ask me, I, I uh, will go um, 75, 80% of my virtual reality experiences using my, my virtual reality glasses are to attend event, events. So I just go to events and but that's uh, that's I talk useful. to people. Well, it could be pretty useful. It, it yeah. really is, uh, mind you. I, I, I have been in events and I, I have been um, in, in contact with people um, in virtual reality that I never been physically. But that's another thing that kind of separates virtual reality from what we have right now with this screen. We have a feeling of presence. And, and that's uh, really interesting because uh, we're talking about a spatial experience. So it's not like this. I'm not talking to a screen. I'm actually talking about um, or about uh, being with someone in a space that I perceive that I can like walk around and with which uh, space and person I can interact with, also with gestures, so I can communicate at, the, at a bigger level. Mind you, again, it's not replacing uh, the physical um, interactions that I have. But again, it's enough to create uh, specific memories. So that's why we, we talk about realities, because uh, it's uh, a reality in itself. And that's uh, where we can actually live and get our memories from uh, if we, well, if we put in the interface that right now. Got, right. got it, got it. So what, what is then the key distinction with AR and its implications? Because you mentioned this, feeling of presence with uh, VR, this, the, the, oh, yeah, with VR, this meaning, but what is the key distinction with AR? Okay, so um, augmented reality uh, is, does not, um, uh, it, it does not relate to replacing physical reality by, uh, or the physical world by a digital one. It's actually uh, about overlaying digital content on top of the physical world. So uh, we're talking about um, through a smartphone or through smart glasses or augmented reality glasses, having the opportunity to uh, see uh, digital content overlaid on top, like for instance, uh, instructions overlaid on top of uh, uh, devices or equipments and uh, being able to step by step know how to uh, perform uh, a specific task and uh, throughout that process, um, the, um, the augmented reality experience can actually uh, be mindful enough to uh, check if we did everything right. If we didn't, it can actually like uh, tell you how to solve your mistakes. So I, I just described what uh, our product at KTR does. But uh, overall, this is to say 
that we're talking about um, changing the meaning of spaces, of objects, by putting a digital layer on top of it. How can I, so, how can I imagine uh, it, it? I don't know if you see this uh, ape next to me. Can I imagine it if I have my uh, AR glass on that I could see some uh, characteristics on uh, how tall he is, how old he has been, uh, when he needs maintenance to be cleaned? Or how can I imagine it for this specific uh, use case, for example? That's exactly it. Or he can start talking to you uh, the painting and he can like share uh, a story actually he can like have different interactions according to the user profiles so for instance he might do something uh, for uh, your kids might do something for you might do something for your guests and um, again uh, in that sense uh, augmented reality uh, allows us to interact with the physical world and physical objects in different ways and listen, uh if this monkey would be talking to me for example is that programmed uh, is that an ai that will be talking or is that something that i put in uh, how i would decide that he talks to me or how is that determined could be uh, could be a content like for instance recorded content like uh, what you have right now on uh, like what we're doing mm -hmm. right now uh, a recording uh, could be could have some intelligence, yes, and uh, uh, the chatbots that you already have, or maybe even like for instance Siri or Alexa, um, we should be aware that they will be augmented at some time, and uh, we will be, uh, and that's one of the big impacts that we're going to have with augmented reality: the ability for us to uh, walk around, go shopping, with uh, well. Uh, an embodied, in augmented reality, embodied uh, Alexa uh, that actually helps me uh, shopping. Will I be, maybe a, a not so trivial question, but will I be in ownership of that data if I have that? Yeah, Alexa, I don't think so because it's uh, centralized. But do you picture in the future AR applications that knows everything about me. For example, when I go shopping, what my preferences are and what I dislike, and that I will be the owner, or will this again emerge into a business model where the highest bidder knows my interests and can tailor specific AR messages uh, in order to uh, yeah, increase the chances to make a sale? That's a perfect question because that's the question that uh, does the trigger or does the jump from augmented reality to the metaverse. Um, because uh, uh, again, uh, at this point uh, we are, uh, after we had all that social media um, experience, so and right now we, we, we all know what uh, um, let's say social media provided and specifically Facebook um, uh, kind of triggered. Uh, by, in, by the way, I, uh, I hope you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't mention this name because this podcast is almost sounding like an anti-Facebook podcast, but that's not, oh, it's, it's not, not our intention not, uh, at all, just to uh, reiterate. No, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Uh, but they are uh, the, the biggest uh, one and uh, alongside with uh, also Twitter, um, and, uh, and and so many others, but uh, they are the biggest one. Um, and uh, uh, at this point, uh, it's uh, the impact that uh, we are feeling with uh, the number of changes that uh, social media brought. And, and mind you, we're not talking about um, uh, changes that are necessarily uh, bad. So for instance, the, the fact that right now you have uh, kind of a fear of missing out, right? And, and the need for you to keep track of what's happening on your timeline. Uh, the fact that um, you, uh, for instance, let's say, uh, if you'd ask me when I started working in augmented reality in 2015, uh, if uh, I would be uh, like in uh, uh, three or four years communicating through emojis, I would tell you that, that that wouldn't make any sense. And if you'd say that uh, everyone or so many people on the world would be communicating through emojis, I would say that <laughs> doesn't make any sense, but here we are. Same thing with memes. Right now, 
MEMS are a universal, a universal communication language. You have that. Like uh, when uh, uh, we started, like in 2017, everyone uh, looked at Pokemon Go as uh, like the, the most uh, recognized and uh, uh, the most impactful platform for augmented reality experiences, and uh, duly so. Issue, um, in 2019, I think it was in 2019 or 2020, um, I think it was Snap's, Snap and Deloitte report that brought out a number of 600 million users, uh, web users that were using augmented reality filters uh, in their everyday communications. Whoa. Uh, at least once a month. So, uh, this to say, things change at such a pace and in, in such a way, well, uh, and, and mostly due to, to, to social networks, um, that uh, it, it's, it's truly impactful, truly magnificent. But the, at the same time, uh, we are always uh, thinking about, okay, so this only happens because I provide my data to them, right? but I, I am not the owner of that data. And, and pretty much Web3 comes in and says, uh, hey, why don't we create a web, right, that uh, allows for people to uh, have uh, ownership and sovereignty over their own data. So, uh, and uh, everything else is open to the community and it's transparent, it's on the blockchain. So suddenly, uh, we, we have that model, right? And it's over there. Uh, the spatial web also, uh, Gabriel René and Dan Mapes uh, published that one, and uh, also um, explores a, a similar model uh, that uh, allows for people to have their own DID of the digital identification. So again, both, uh, are, uh, let's say, uh, foreseeing for the users the possibility for them to own their own data and to actually just enable it or to tap into that, uh, the, to that data only the, 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 the corporates or the, the companies that uh, the user wants to. So this, of course, is something that right now is not in place, at least not at a broader level on the web, but um, that's the vision that you have on the metaverse. And that is a, a bit even more impactful because we're talking about, as I see it, like the metaverse uh, has this, we're talking about the digitalization of pretty much everything, right? and the interconnection of everything. So, um, and, and everything having like a digital twin, having everything having like a digital um, interaction being possible. And uh, that, of course, uh, creates um, a huge, not a huge, uh, it, it creates thousands <laughs> of challenges regarding privacy, regarding, uh, well, so many rights. And, and, and if you add to that the fact that we're going to a dome uh, augmented reality glasses uh, that may like, uh, and those augmented reality glasses, they have mm -hmm. cameras and that we are in a way like enabling uh, the biggest CCTV circuit in history. <laughs> then of course we have uh, several privacy issues that uh, make users being mindful and again makes us uh, also uh, as users being um, and as citizens uh, become more aware of the need uh, to, to start uh, creating like again responsible ways for us to, to yeah so yeah that, that sounds really uh, interesting I don't want to make this podcast a, a dictionary series but can we may, maybe complete uh, the list onto what XR and MR, uh, are they really separate uh, definitions or, or is it just a buzzword, uh, another one uh, that's added on the list? 
Um, so, um, again, augmented reality um, differs from virtual reality in the sense that one uh, replaces, virtual reality replaces and uh, augmented reality overlays. So, then if you go out and search for the virtual, uh, uh, so it's the uh, augmented virtuality continuum, no, physical virtuality continuum, no, physicality virtuality continuum. Sorry, it's one of these uh, these words, but um, it's actually a continuum that uh, approaches or, or depicts the several stages uh, between you being fully immersed as a user uh, in an experience and uh, you being uh, just focused on, uh, well, just wandering around in the physical world. So um, there are several stages. Um, again, uh, you have like assisted reality uh, when you don't like smart glasses, but the glasses are not smart enough to like recognize the context. So they cannot like uh, put the information uh, in context, like overlay on top of specific objects, the instructions, which means that they are like uh, um, tablets that uh, just overlay screens on top of what you have. Like for instance, you have realware, you have music, they are assisted reality uh, devices. Then um, you have, uh, you, you said uh, mixed reality. So mixed reality devices uh, and uh, namely talking about Microsoft's HoloLens and Microsoft's devices, they are Microsoft's framework is named Microsoft Mixed Reality Development Framework or Mixed Reality Toolkit, and um, it uh, um, well it allows at least the purpose is to allow developers to create experiences that can um, allow or or that can enable uh, a user to go from um, a fully augmented experience so. Uh, witnessing and interacting with the real world with digital object and then suddenly switching to a uh, virtual reality and then for being fully immersed. Well, it's not those and those then, two at the same time. It's the ability to shift between those two. Yeah, so uh, having the possibility of you uh, actually being able to, with the, the, the same device to do that. Um, and then uh, XR or extended uh, reality it's like a, a catch-all concept that uh, picks up on all of these terminologies and inserts them into like this big basket. So it's like uh, talking about XR, it's the same as talking about immersive technology. So it's like the whole shebang. Uh, thank you for helping me with finally understanding what the real actual difference are between those four uh, terms that uh, give me some uh, peace of uh, mind. I'm curious, uh, Louis, in what specific uh, application or use cases would you see AR being more valuable and in what specific cases would VR maybe be more helpful? Because I feel they can be applied to different situations and one can be more helpful than the other in a specific context. Yes, um, right now uh, we see uh, VR being used a lot in training uh, and in uh, um, also in events, um, in training mostly due to the fact that uh, it, it provides a dedicated experience as, as we discussed previously and also because it creates um, memories uh, very effectively, right? So it makes sense uh, for training. Um, also, can uh, I just, can I just uh, jump in there? I just got some uh, revelation in my mind. For, I don't know, I'm not uh, a uh, clinical uh, psychologist, but you, when you said it creates memories, could it potentially also help with people that might suffer from uh, depression into creating new uh, memories that just jumped uh, into my mind, but I'm wondering. No, absolutely. You, you have, um, um, right now, you have a lot of, uh, companies working on mental health through VR. You also have, for instance, even in, uh, uh, you have uh, universities, like uh, I think it's the University of York. Uh, they also have some work being done uh, in, in that area. Um, and even like, uh, we're talking about mental diseases, like uh, for instance, Virtual Leap, 
uh, Virtual Leap is uh, a startup that is working here uh, or from uh, Portugal, uh, and uh, um, they are they have this um, set of games that uh, if you play them daily or at least periodically, uh, you will be uh, much more well defended against. I think it's Parkinson and um, another mental disease, mental health disease. Incredibly fascinating. So, I didn't know this. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, so this to say that uh, it, it, it does have an impact. Um, but again, um, and, and for instance, uh, even again on the training side and also on the perception um, of, uh, of our understanding of values, like for instance, one of the issues um, that it's better to, to provide an example. Um, there was this uh, big oil company um, that uh, had uh, an issue regarding um, well uh, uh, gender valuation and uh, uh, equality uh, and and also some uh, um, let's say. Um, issues uh, regarding uh, the role of uh, uh, women leaders inside their organizations. Um, same thing with uh, some uh, xenophobic um, approaches to um, specific uh, workers. So uh, prejudice. Yeah. And to work on top of uh, these two topics, so equality and prejudice, uh, a consultancy actually activated this um, training uh, model um, that allowed for uh, these workers, so workers inside this uh, culturally, uh, we're talking about a, a, a very male culture, right? So we're talking about an oil and gas, uh, company, so very, very, um, well, uh, also an old company or uh, older uh, mm -hmm. uh, workers, and and that uh, allowed these workers to by by uh, putting in the glasses and donning the glasses and entering virtual reality to actually uh, experience and have um, uh, experience of situations while being people of color or while being um, a woman. Mm, interesting. And in what... So we're talking about embodiment. Sorry. Yes, no problem. And in what situations uh, would AR be more uh, useful? So um, I, I, I think that AR, um, uh, as it can change and uh, enhance the... Um, the potential and uh, the usage that we have for uh, objects and spaces and be them like empty spaces or um, spaces with uh, uh, well with objects in it and, and uh, equipment I think that overall we can use it uh, very horizontally let's say like that in uh, all of them across the market so it's very across the board we're talking about um, Let's say right now, doctors are using augmented reality solutions to actually um, see overlays of uh, and uh, the um, uh, overlays of the um, body. of the body. Yeah, exactly of uh, the people that they are doing surgeries uh, on. Um, right now, we are uh, having uh, augmented reality in education, allowing for. Um, children to actually see equipment and to actually see uh, in front of them uh, the, um, the models instead of, uh, um, well, re using like those um, physical uh, models that uh, we, we used to have. In back in the 20th century, I can I can say that. Yes, I, I cannot necessarily <laughs> picture. I don't know if my education was so mo modern, but yeah, I'm interested how that uh, fundamentally changes education AR. Yeah, uh, I think that just for the fact that you are able to uh, step by step see how you need to do something, and then 
um, afterwards like having someone being like uh, hollow ported uh, or brought in both in a virtual reality or an augmented reality um, environment and, and show you how to do something or being able, for instance, to train you in doing So I, I am a very so visual uh, person, uh, Louis. So if you start telling me this story, I'm like, okay, we have an augmented uh, Louis who's explaining me uh, a mathematic formula, for example. Just a trivial example, but maybe not the, the most uh, appropriate one for, for this specific case. But I'm curious in that example or wider, how would AR be distinctly more valuable than a real Louis who's explaining me this stuff? Or am I completely mis, uh, mis, uh, misvisualizing how AR could be helpful in education? No, in that case, for instance, let's say that uh, you want, uh, let's say that uh, uh, you want to discuss a formula, yeah, or do you want to do like a design thinking mm -hmm. session with me? Uh, but I'm here in Lisbon. Uh, so, but you do have your colleagues with you, right? So uh, you can have all your colleagues there and then you can have also me using augmented reality glasses and I'll be there <laughs> and you'll be uh, talking also to me and people that have uh, the glasses, they might like see me uh, directly or else they will see like a screen where they will acknowledge that I am there and they will hear me also and um, again, uh, you will be interacting with me uh, with uh, a sense of presence that I'm there. Um, that is, I wouldn't say uh, exactly the same, but it's similar to uh, the other physical presence of, or to the physical presence of all the other ones that I are I think present. that's incredibly fascinating, but will that then also be a live uh, Louis or a pre-recorded Louis who is interacting uh with me because that has huge potential uh, for either ways. Yeah, so uh, I, I'd say it could be both. So right now you have Microsoft uh, already uh, is already launched and is uh, iterating uh, on a software uh, called Microsoft Mesh that allows exactly for this. Um, and you also have uh, Spatial. Uh, which is yet another software that uh, also allows for this, and well, and, and several other platforms. But this to say that holoportation, so this ability for us to have um, interactions such as these, but in a spatial, volumetric way, uh, with which and with uh, uh, some level of digital presence, that is something that right now is also a, a big use case for uh, for augmented reality. I think that's, uh, this is uh, enormous and I almost completely understand what you're almost uh, saying because if I'm in this room, I have the ability to see, again, sorry for mentioning your name so, uh, so repeatedly, but in this example, uh, Louis here in my room without you being really present here. But what I don't uh, yet understand is how this hologram then in that case um, could see me because I think a couple of days I read a uh, use case or a reference case about uh, a particular oil and gas company where they were trying to fix a uh, pipeline in the middle of the desert and they got as ex um, assistance by an AR from distance and what I then didn't understand is how this assistant could provide assistance because does do they see in some way or the other way what is happening there to provide them assistance or is that a pre-recorded something entity that knows what is going on there okay maybe do you understand what i'm saying yeah so remote assistance is also one of the big really big uh, business to business use cases for augmented reality so um it allows for someone that is uh, remotely connected mm -hmm. to uh, tap into a user's glasses. Okay. So, and the user uh, can actually on the other side see, uh, sorry, can see like a small window with the video from the person on the other side. And that person on the other side can start putting uh, like annotations, or augmented reality annotations on top of the field of view of the person with the glasses. So it's uh, rather than him saying something like, oh, now do you see 
uh, the red uh, cable on your right. Uh, so select the third uh, string and connect it with uh, the blue yeah. one. So it, it doesn't need to do that. It, it just points like uh, an arrow. It says, okay, so you see this? Okay, so connect so with th this. Through, yeah, that's awesome. That's phenomenal. So through my AR glasses or, or lens or whatever, he can interface with my vision and then direct me with directions uh, through that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And uh, uh, you have several. Right now, I would say that um, business to business wise, it's probably that I, I yeah, I, I risk saying it's the, the most, uh, the, the, the use case with uh, the largest number of uh, companies and startups working. Mm, interesting. Well, so what, what does, yeah. what does uh, Kitar uh, try to play a role in? Uh, all of this. What, what's the role they are trying to play? So uh, KTR is uh, an augmented quality assurance company at this time. So we are a startup uh, and our main focus is to reduce uh, the costs of poor quality. So uh, we're talking about um, on, the, on the manufacturing shop floor trying to reduce the mistakes that most of the times uh, create, uh, well, all of the, um, well, line stoppages and uh, sometimes also product recalls um, and, and, and several other costs uh, that relate with uh, uh, dealing with uh, defects and dealing also with waste. So uh, our main focus at this time is to enable uh, the automotive and uh, the airspace manufacturing industries with tools that can um, enable uh, shop floor workers to do their jobs with much less errors and also to create continuously um, uh, continuous to uh, continuously create a continuous improvement <laughs> opportunity sort of uh, for, in, uh, for processes probes. exactly always uh, with uh, kaizen and the and yeah the i guess i learned exactly. something from university <laughs> okay awesome but when you are talking about uh reducing uh, mistakes error and uh, wastage i am uh, immediately think of why not putting an uh, AI or throw a robot at it. What is uniquely superior or supreme on AI compared to those uh, solutions? Yeah, um, actually that's, that's, a, that's a great question because it's uh, um, pretty much uh, uh, one of the major driving forces uh, at this time regarding our business uh, and regarding Industry 4.0 as, as a whole, uh, automation, right? So everyone is looking towards automation and trying to gain uh, some economies of scale uh, in order to, to benefit, uh, especially now uh, where in this world where we have a lot of, um, uh, well, issues uh, to, to tackle and, uh, and with the pandemic running. So um, we do believe also that automation can, can bring uh, a lot of benefits, but uh, what we also do believe is that in, in specific areas, specifically in uh, areas uh, that, deal, uh, that, that require a level of quality uh, that is, um, let's say, not, um, I wouldn't say, um, uh, common, but I would say that is uh, more sophisticated. Uh, sophisticated, it's needed. Um, so humans are more than uh, important. They are crucial for things and for errors not to happen. So uh, if we're talking about uh, building, for instance, um, a car. So each car is. Um, uh, sorry, being sure that each car is done the right way and that is 100% quality tested is crucial because uh, each car uh, has um, uh, a, a huge liability, well, several liabilities socially uh, regarding, uh, well, uh, just being on the road and, uh, and be, they, they might like hit someone. So it, it really is re really, really important safety wise that everything is according and all pair. But at the same time, companies also need to be profitable, right? 
So um, we, and if errors uh, happen, companies will need to take care of them. But at the same time, uh, they, they can only like uh, take care of them until they, they well, they, they, they turn a profit or else they will just, well, uh, seize activity. So our main focus is to um, leverage uh, our human's capability of driving more and more solutions and creating more solutions and dealing with, let's say, complex uh, and, and the rising complexity of uh, uh, manufacturing at this time um, by bringing, let's say, um, tools that allows uh, all of the knowledge, all of the information they need to be available um, in a very straightforward, straightforward way to uh, the worker so that the worker does uh, all of its work, all of their work uh, in, um, in a safe and in uh, also um, very, um, again, uh, straightforward way. So uh, what I'm saying is uh, it's a way for workers uh, to uh, safeguard and, and uh, uh, the only way to do that, uh, the only way to, to actually for companies to safeguard that they, they are having the best levels of quality is to bet on uh, workers that are able to think and to sort out problems. Uh, and, and again, robots go as far as their programming Goal. Yeah, they, they didn't and allow for uh, exceptions or not yet, but uh, yeah, I can definitely see where it's uniquely distinct. So maybe another question which is a bit uh, complex to answer, I probably, I suppose, otherwise you would have started maybe your own startup uh, already, but what are maybe one of the most underestimated or overlooked theses and cases where AR is not yet uh, applied and you see that will be applied in the future? I think that there are a lot of models and there are a lot of opportunities rising on the market. Um, clearly, uh, again, the, the convergence that we're seeing with uh, 5G, with blockchain, with um, IoT or IoT, so suddenly you have a lot of possibilities available uh, and clearly um, the, the possibility, for instance, of you having like um, persistent augmented reality experiences available in the middle of the street will allow for um, so many new services. Let, uh, for instance, uh, tourism guides. You can right now create um, tourism guides or a tourist guide, a tour guide, mm -hmm. for each corner of the world in augmented reality. Oh, wow, yeah, that would be phenomenal, yeah. <laughs> and it's always there. Okay. Rain or sunshine. Yeah, and hey, no pandemic issue. So hey, here's a startup idea. <laughs> okay, pay attention listeners, maybe it's an opportunity. Thanks, uh, Louis. Just a couple, uh, two questions before we are uh, wrapping up as I'm aware of time. Um, we as customers, I see many applications for enterprises and organization, and I can also imagine that's quite costly. Me as a particular customer or for the listener, how can we get started way with uh, AR aside from uh, Snapchat filters? Yeah, there are a lot, uh, several uh, platforms right now uh, with which you can tinker, um, like for instance, uh, Trying now to review, um, there are several, like, uh, let me just check, yeah, sure. uh, like this one, for instance, uh, <clears throat> okay, just because I, I don't want to uh, send you to the to an incorrect website. Oh, perfect. And otherwise so, uh, I can share them below the post later as well. Yeah, exactly. So uh, for instance, you have Zappar. Okay. Uh, Zappar, it's, uh, again, it's a good uh, platform for you to just jump in and, and start doing your stuff. You also have, um, uh, I think it's just also another one 
that is also interesting for you to, to create your own experiences, virtual reality experiences, and also augmented reality, which is, uh, just a minute, I think it's Dimensions XR, but I'll tell you in a short yeah, while, sure. so... It's Shapes XR. Oh, Shapes XR. Uh, it's a good one. Yeah, from uh, Gabriel Romagnoli. Well, not from him, but he works there. Um, yeah, great, great. And, uh, that, and that's, uh, that, that's awesome for uh, for the audience as well. So if you want to play around with it and explore, we already have two sources and maybe uh, I will share afterwards some additional ones. So Shapes XR and sure. Zepar, and this is no promotion, but just for, I don't know this uh, organization, but just if you are curious. So last question, uh, Louis, to close off with, uh, we have spoken uh, deeply about AR, the metaverse, I've learned a lot of uh, new stuff and uh, I think uh, I'm going to play with it uh, right after this uh, session to explore even more. It uh, really triggered something in me, yeah, in me, but I'm curious, what are maybe some takeaways uh, about AR, about the metaverse that you would like to wrap up with some nuggets that you could give uh, the audience? Well, the first one is um, actually what, what, again, getting back to what drives me, um, it, it's, this is happening. So uh, the metaverse is happening, augmented reality is right now here. Uh, so it's not uh, a matter of us choosing not to connect with it. Uh, it doesn't make sense. It's pretty much the same. Uh, when I was, again, <laughs> 20 years ago, I, I, I heard things like, Oh, I'm not going into that bandwagon of emails or internet. Oh, I, I'm going to stay a bit more. I heard that several times. And, and, and mind you, it, it really is important for people to understand that now's the time not just to join in and to share the bounty of, uh, well, of what all this platform is going to bring us, which is really important. But more than that, join in to build and, and to uh, actually uh, for everyone to bring their own selves into what this new iteration of the web, new iteration of the internet, new platform is going to be, or else you wouldn't have, you wouldn't be, uh, you're not uh, allowed to <laughs> say like that to say that uh, it's going to be bad or that it's not aligned with your expectations or your interests. You are the first one to actually to 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 to, to be uh, you are the one responsible to, to actually come in and to help us build uh, the metaverse and that's pretty much what I feel uh, compelled to do and that's why I do what I do so that that's the first one the, the second one is uh, read and try and tinker a lot not just to know what it is but also afterwards for you to go beyond being a user and become a bit of a thinker. I'm very curious uh, yeah. what you are, you are reading, Louis. Maybe we can, after this uh, podcast, share some uh, valuable piece. I'm very interested in that. Um, you you, you want to finish your absolutely. sense? Sorry, I was uh, interjecting there. No, absolutely. No, I was just sharing that. It's getting back a bit to the responsibility in, uh, in using technology because it only happens, because again, no one taught us how to use technology. Mm -hmm. So as no one taught us to, how to use technology, we were not onboarded onto it. So we need to create our own processes in order to become more responsible in using yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, and that's why we need to like uh, be users. Okay, that's, that's not an issue. But then afterwards, like remove ourselves from the user uh, frame and then with some distance, try and think about what is happening and what we're giving and what we're getting from it and if it's just a time sink or if uh, we are just if it's just our comfort zone working um, and all of this is really really important and, and actually if uh, um, uh, I, I think universities and educational spaces will play a huge role in making this ref uh, this thinking mindset grow uh, in, in the new generations because it will be very, very immensely needed uh, for us to keep things into perspective, not just be like overwhelmed and uh, like uh, uh, rolled over by these um, 
the, the, the benefits and uh, all the convenience that all these technological solutions bring to, to us and our lives. Thanks, uh, Luis, for that compelling and very uh, interesting uh, message. Where, uh, practically, where can uh, listeners and uh, watchers, as well, also being a YouTuber, where can we find you, uh, Luis? I'm, I'm always on the social media, so you can connect me on LinkedIn and also on Twitter. And uh, um, sometimes uh, I'm also um, some uh, some events that uh, I, I also share there. And you are more than welcome to, to just buzz in and uh, participate. All of those events, all of those talks usually either are like open or they have like a Q&A. So, um, yeah, uh, discussion is at this point that I think that exactly what we need so Def uh, definitely yeah. i will definitely uh, I'm looking forward to attend one of those and uh, hear you uh, yeah, speak more about and learn more thank you very much uh, Luis. i wish you best of luck uh, in your role in uh, kit AR, kit ar and also in uh, yeah spreading the message and uh, yeah helping us prepare for the future thank you very much uh, Luis. really enjoyed it and really uh, learnful thank you very much Samir.